right, recording in progress, so that means we can officially get started. Uh, my name is Britta Rilbins. I'm here on behalf of Hearns and West. Um, I'll be facilitating today's meeting, uh, and I'm new, so all of you are new faces. It's great to see all these new faces. I hope to meet all of you if we haven't chatted yet. Um, and yeah, we are here today for the South Sacramento Foreign Community Air Protection Steering Committee meeting, first meeting of the quarter of 2024. So thank you to those of you here in person and thanks to those of you who are joining us online. Um, I will go ahead and pass it to Stephanie for roll call. All right, uh, good evening everyone. Thank you for those of you who have come out um, to meet us in person, um, me in person and those of you who are on the line. I'm gonna move forward with starting to take you our roll call and starting with our steering committee. Um, if you are present, please say uh, present when your name is called. Uh, Bill Nolten. Baker. I can't hear you. You guys got something going on in the background. Uh, Chris? Yeah, you guys got some over talking somewhere. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, give me the mic. Maybe that. <laughs> All right, we're going to start this again. Is that better? For yeah, that's better. That's better. Wonderful. Okay, well, again, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. For everyone that's in the uh, room, the meeting room, and then also you who are online, I'm going to start with our roll call. So when you hear your name, please say present. I'm um, starting with Bill Nolton. Bishop Chris Baker. Present. Jamala Green. Patricia Shelby. Present. Rhonda Henderson. Present. Tito. Present. Benton Valdez. Present. Jesus Cervantes. Present. John Rice. Michael Lampkin. Richard Falcone. Here. Richard Lincoln. Ward of Lin Richard Lincoln, Ward Winchell. Present. All right. And then I'm Stephanie Williams, and I'm also present. I think I missed someone. Rachel Brown. All right. Okay, so that is it for the steering um, committee. And so next, I'd just like to introduce the district and, um, um, and just call your name. Uh, Janice Lamb. Here. Um, Sara? Here. Mark? Here. Jaime? Here. Amy? Here. Ray? David Yang? Here. And Leah? Here. All right, so we are all here. All right. Um, and then two car staff, and we have Adriana? Here. And Diana Sanchez? Here. All right, wonderful. And again, you've already met the facilitator, who is Maria Romans. All right, thank you for that. And with that, I am going to pass it over to the district. I'll just take the mic. Okay. 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 All right, so I'm actually going to take over for the agenda and then I'll be passing it back again. Um, for those of you who are online, I'm going to be running a mic back and forth. So if there's any pauses, um, just know I'm running in the background. I uh, might or might not be witnessing that. Uh, so for the agenda tonight, um, you heard the welcome in introductions during the committee roll call. Um, we will be covering some administrative items that will be the 2024 full lead election and the approving of the meeting minutes. Following that, we will do district updates, steering committee recruitment. Uh, we will do discussion items. We have a few lined up. Those include charter amendment and certain community boundary. Following that, we have subcommittee updates that will be outreach and SERP. After that, we have new business and upcoming meeting topics, public comments, and then we will be adjourning. So that's what you can look forward to tonight. And before passing it to Sara for some logistics that are mostly virtual, 
Um, I will be going over just some general procedures. So this is a hybrid meeting. So we have all of you in person, we have all of you online, and then we have that sort of liaising between the in-person and the online to try and make it as equitable for everyone online and in person, that way we can communicate with each other. Uh, as you've heard, we've already made an adjustment to use microphones. We might be making small adjustments or big adjustments throughout as they're needed to try and make this process better for everyone. So please be patient with us. Um, if we do have to do those, this is our first hybrid meeting. So thanking you in advance for your patience. Um, I'll just quickly go over some quick procedure. So we are going to do, um, in terms of order of engagement, we will do the steering committee members first. So if we're having a discussion item um, and people have you know, questions or comments, we will defer to the steering committee first, and then we will pass it to the public. And the way that we're gonna do that is we will do in-person first and then virtual. So that means in-person steering committee, then public, virtual steering committee, and then public. We might switch that in the future if we find a better way that is more efficient for everyone. So this is really frustrating. Please let us know after because we don't want to make it that way. And we will be accepting questions and comments throughout the night. That way you don't have something stuck in your head and then you lose it by the time we get to the public comment section. So if you have any questions or comments throughout, feel free to let us know. But there also will be a dedicated um, comment section at the end. If there aren't any questions about that sort of procedure, I will now pass it to Sara to go over the virtual logistics. So for those who are joining us remotely, thank you. Um, if you have a question or a comment, please raise your virtual hand and, and wait to be called on. Um, on the Zoom web application, for those of you who may not be familiar, you can um, click reactions and then press the please raise your hand um, icon. Um, if you're on the phone, if you call in, you can dial star nine to raise your virtual hand. Please state your name and affiliation when you're called on and unmute yourself using star six. If you're having any technical difficulties, you can message the host or co-host. Um, and also you can email the 8617 clerk at airquality.org. Sarah, so I will now just quickly review the code of conduct, which everyone here is pretty familiar with, since this is brought over from the steering committee charter. So just quickly reading this over um, to get us in the right framework and mental state, members will treat everyone with courtesy and respect, avoid personally attacking or demeaning anyone, Avoid interrupting others who have the floor. Avoid disrupting or delaying the meeting. Strive to be fair and unbiased towards each other, the public and the district. We will value each other's time and respect each other's opportunity to speak. We will reach to strive consensus, but agree to disagree if need be. We will listen courteously and attentively to the public, and we will strive to hold each other accountable to the code of conduct. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, for the administrative items, I will, throughout tonight, I will um, remind us of some item action. So these are, if you're in person, this is, I'm not sure if you can read that, and if so, my apologies, but these are written down right there, um, and we will be putting these on the chat route. These are just to keep us on topic in terms of remembering what the goal is of each item. So for administrative items, the actions that we will be acting upon are voting on nominations and approval of minutes. And I think we can move into the next slide. Yes, one moment. Okay. Reviewing the co-lead roles for the charter um, really quick. So the co-leadership duties, the duties of the co-leads include, but are not limited to, co-leads taking the role as meeting chairs during the meeting. Co-leads will meet and work with the district and facilitator to review committee. Recommendations for agenda items and other relevant information to develop meeting agendas. The co-leads will help communicate information related to the steering committee 
and the police will work with the district and facilitator to plan and coordinate meeting activities and discussions to ensure the meetings are informative and productive. Moving into nominations. So we will now be asking for nominations and we can go ahead and move into that. Um, we're going to be confirming a few nominations that we already received um, who have accepted. And so uh, we have Stephanie a. Williams nominated, Tito, um, and Vincent, who have all confirmed. Okay. So do you so you do you all have to be sure. sure we're seeing some nods and smiles. You can vote for Tito to accept. It's a deja vu. It's the same thing like a year ago. There's any addition. That one was a year ago. Yeah. Okay. So we have a three. Are there any additional nominations at this time? And I will also ask, are there any nominations in the chat from any of the series committee members? Seeing none in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any other nominations in on the remote participants? Okay, we're not seeing any nominations in the chat. All right, so we can go ahead and confirm those nomination names. We will be passing out some ballots. So these are being passed off right now. Um, and you will write in the names of your colleagues. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. I would turn more. United Latinos get one vote, right? Yes, yeah. But Vincent, the colleagues, no, I'm the only one. And then do we have a box that they're spinning them to, or should I let them? The box is over there. Okay. How are you? Um, how are they doing this uh, online? Because there could be an explanation for us who are here, so mm -hmm. they know that they have their privacy. Yes. So Sarah will now explain how it's happening online. I'm repeating the question that Pat asked with the mic in case the virtual people didn't hear it. So Sarah's going to explain how the virtual people are doing this. So for steering committee members who are attending uh, remotely. We will have you email the 8617 clerk with the two names uh, that you would like to vote for, and that way we can keep um, it anonymous, and I will receive those via email. Please let us know if you have any questions for the voting process um, if you are attending the vote. You have a lot of back talk. I can't understand what you're saying. Can you hear us better when we just talk directly into the owl? Yeah, because you keep getting back and forth a lot of echo and whatnot. Yeah, it's a big world. So maybe we use maybe we use the mic when it's just down there. Okay. Sorry, can speak directly to them. Yeah, that may be that may be what it is. If they're getting too close with the mic to the owl, there may be mm -hmm. some interference. So do you want to just leave the mic here? Yeah. yeah. Here at the back of the room, and okay. then we can see what that looks like. How does that sound now? Um, are you able to hear us okay? Yeah, that's better. Okay, that's better. All right. Okay. At any point in time that we begin, if we start to fall off, just let us know. Yeah. I think yeah. also we're speaking at because we're sitting really close to each other, so we're speaking in like uh, our, our regular voice. But I think we're going to have to project a little bit more for those of, of us that are in the room, so that you can hear um, online. So we're going to have to use our outside voices yes. for the rest of the evening. No worries, we'll do it. <laughs> All right, so we can, I was going to say we can move to the next slide because it just says what we just. Okay. So are we voting right now? Yeah, you can vote and you can put it in the ballot box right behind there. Okay, vote. Write the two names that you all uh, want to vote for. And can we move to the next slide? Let me see your 
It's key. Yeah, yeah, that's key. Yeah, it's a DSO. Yeah, the last one. Online people, it's D I D O H O A N G. It's the third one. That's the third one. Oh. All right. All right. Yeah, All right. So after collecting uh, the votes in person and giving some time to online folks um, to email those in, the results will be announced by email this week. Um, and we can go ahead and move on to the administrative items. So I will ask Stephanie to cover the approval of meeting minutes. All right, so uh, with that, and for those of us in the room and online, I would like to make a motion that we would accept the meeting minutes from October 2023. And would what? anyone like to make a motion? I'll second the motion. All right. Mitchell. All right. All right. Since Pat made the motion and then the motion was no. seconded. No. Second. Oh, so Stephanie. I made a motion. Stephanie made the motion. Seconded. Okay. Seconded. Board seconded. And then sorry, it was third, thirded. <laughs> That's not the right word. It was heard. All right. Approved. Yes, approved. approved. Thank you. All right. All right, we are moving along here. So I, oh, I'm sorry. You motion and you second, you need to vote. To vote. Oh, and now we have to vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Apologies. All right. We yeah. can make a vote. So I'd like to go ahead. All in favor of accepting the October 23rd meeting minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. All right, moving on. Thank you. Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. I got a question. How do we look online on Facebook? Are you guys, is it rotating and showing us? Just curious. So, you look at the up Yeah, how do we look to them? So, I just look curious. We're Facebook Live. Yeah. That's how it looks to. Um, Okay. And then they pin that camera to change the display. They all just see the PowerPoint. Uh, thank you for voting on that item. And I will now um, ask yes to move to district updates. And I will invite district staff to provide updates. So, Janice? Yeah. Mark's actually going to go first. Oh, okay. okay. Mark. Good evening, everyone, and also to the members and public that are on the call. First of all, I just want to extend a huge thank you as we now head into 2024. Um, we have some new faces that have been able to join us, and we have uh, some additional recruitment we're going to talk about later on. But also a huge thank out to everyone that's been with us. Um, you know, many of you have already given many years to the steering committee and the great work that you're doing for our communities. So you just say a heartfelt thanks. Um, from all of us for, for all of your efforts over this time. I just want to sort of kick off 2024 with that note. Um, I also want to share some exciting news for the steering committee in terms of some district updates real quick. Um, you know, as we shared with you back at the last uh, steering committee meeting, uh, the district has been successful um, of securing some funds so that when this body decides that they are ready, presumably in the next few months, if we're going to make that formal commitment to go to a community emission reduction plan or a CERP, we do have the resources to go ahead and make that happen. On the district side, to help facilitate that and make sure that because this work's going to be a little bit of what we've been doing, also some shifts, you know, in terms of what your goals are as we move forward. So in order to provide a focal point, even at the district, the district has um, placed Janice in a, a special role for the next two plus years. So, um, so she is officially the uh, director of our community air monitoring or community air protection program or the CAP. So she's taking on that special role. She still has some tasks still in my division, but uh, she also gets a, a bit of an elevation there as well. So she will be speaking on our behalf, your behalf, and we're talking with the other air districts, with CARP, 
making sure that we continue to get those resources and that we have a central speaking point. And we're really happy and congratulations to Janice and her new role. So if you don't mind. <laughs> Congratulations, I really enjoyed working with her. I hope this comes with, with, with a promotion to pay. There are some. Uh, <laughs> she is being uh, appropriately brought forward in terms of her extra effort, work, responsibility, and, and the good and bad that comes with that. All right. <laughs> We're only saying that because many of us have been community folks and church members, and oftentimes women are promoted to levels of responsibility with and titles with no compensation oh, for the difference. And so uh, that's our advocacy as a community. And uh, we hope that that is what has come forward for Janice. Thank you, Janice, for taking on this role. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and to Pat's point, you know, I think it's a great one. Um, I'll be the first one, first one saying I was hugely advocating for exactly those elements, Pat. Um, <laughs> Before Janice was making her choice of whether or not to accept or not, because I told, and I don't want to go into too much detail, but I told Jan, make sure that you actually feel right with what is being presented um, for taking on this added responsibility and uh, commitment. Um, but we also view it as a commitment from the district as well. Yeah. Um, we appreciate in, that. In terms of this role for Janice as she moves forward. Um, on a quick note, I'm going to just touch a very quickly before I turn it back over to Janice. Um, Jaime and I are going to tag team a little bit. We're just going to have Janice in between us on state budget updates. Um, as many of you, have, you can't pretty much miss if you can catch anything in the news about what's going on with the state budget. So maybe in case anyone's wondering, what are the potential implications for all of us and the work that we're doing? So we're going to break down time in a moment. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the incentive side of the implications. I'm going to talk real quick on just what we call the implementation side. Mm -hmm. This is the work that we've been doing on the camp all this time, the work we're doing on the CERP going forward once the committee makes that uh, decision. So just as I mentioned before, we've already secured the CERP resources. So we got an advance, the two-year commitment. So fortunately, we have that, not literally in the bank, but we have that commitment. So for our efforts, um, once this body makes that formal decision, once you feel you're ready, we will be able to have those resources. We will not be impacted. Um, there are some implications, just what will happen in terms of other aspects of it as we go forward. Uh, the governor's budget, at least at the moment, has proposed to keep, I'm going to call it mostly status quo on the implementation, meaning for the last few years, the state has provided 50 million statewide for the this type of effort. That's statewide. Now, the last two years, they've added in each year, they call it a one-time extra 10. That extra 10 this next year is not on the table from the governor's budget. But they're also talking about the 50 that we've been given for the last four to five. So for the most part, though, the efforts we're working on, when this body decides that they are ready for a CERP, we have to secure those resources. That is not impacted. So that's pretty much an overall positive, I think, Obviously, just overall in terms of what this means for your communities, other things like that, statewide, it's been a slight cutback in terms of the resources provided statewide. So that obviously has some different implications. But for our efforts over the next, once this body makes a decision for formally going toward a serve, we will have those resources. Those are secure. I'll pause there if there's any questions. And again, Janice is going to talk next. Oh, we'll just go ahead and have Jaime talk on the incentive side. So maybe we'll take that piece as well, then we can shift if there's any questions on this. Thank you, everybody. And good to see everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I'm a Lemos. I oversee the Transportation and Climate Change Division. And that's the division that implements, actually, I should not say implement, because then we're going to get all these language crossed. We're the division that manages all of the incentive dollars for community air protection. Uh, we also manage other incentive dollars like the Paul Moyer program, DMB, and others. But uh, that's the distinction uh, with Mark and Janice. We have CAP, 8617 implementation dollars, which Mark just talked about. And then in transportation and climate change, we have the incentive dollars. So two buckets of funds. And uh, similar to Mark, uh, we were able to secure another 6.5 million for the 23-24 year. Okay, And these are, again, for projects that you're familiar with. 
modernization of equipment, zero emission, medium duty, heavy duty. And we'll be reaching out to the steering committee pretty soon to seek priorities for these types of projects. Okay. Now, as, as Mark mentioned, the government. Hey, we'll set timer for 20 minutes. Is that a question? No, uh, someone online was unmuted and they requested to set a timer so that we can. Keep <laughs> okay. uh, okay. What's the question? No. Um, so the governor has made a commitment, uh, as Mark mentioned already, 50 million for implementation and operations, uh, $195 million for incentive projects. So, you know, not as much as, as, as in the past, but you know, just a little bit less, which is which is a good a good value. And then also five million for community air grants, which uh, Valley Vision has been fortunate to, to receive in the past. So those are the funds that would be going in then um, for in the governor's budget. Of course, you know, they're still massaging of, of the budget and where that where the numbers really, really um, when the numbers are really confirmed, but but there's a, a lot of really good news for community air protection funds. And maybe just sorry, one thing I should probably mention is this is all based on the governor's budget. As we all know, that's a starting place. Mm -hmm. It then does have to go to the state assembly. They'll come back with their own recommendation. And again, as you've been tracking, you know that the governor's budget assumes one level of deficit. There's another level of deficit in question as well. So we'll need to wait and see how everything plays out. But at least as a starting point, um, this is still being considered an important area of interest by the government. That's, that's, that's really great. I, um, I hope you indicated that um, you will maybe reaching out to the steering committee um, in regards to priorities. Can you talk just a little bit about about that for some of our new folks of what what that would you mean by that? Sure. So for the last few years, uh, the transportation and climate change division has reached out to members of the steering committee to help us uh, prioritize projects that these funds are going to be targeting. So basically, what are the priorities within the, the AB 617 steering committee? Uh, in the past, we know, we've heard from you, and, and some of those priorities are, we want projects that are within our AB 617 boundary. We want projects that travel through our AB 617 boundary, and we want projects that are zero emission. We know and we acknowledge that there's a whole bunch of other priorities but because of the community air protection guidelines and where we are with the camp, there are certain guidelines that we also have to adhere to with, um, with the program itself. So we work with the guidelines and then we work with community priorities. Then that's how we design a grant solicitation. We then put that grant solicitation and we, we do an email blast to community partners, stakeholders, uh, elected officials, the steering committee, uh, zero emission manufacturers, CEOs, and then we have it open to accept for projects and applications. Any other questions? I'd rather example of those. It doesn't have to be related sure. to that for anybody who's got some of those funds. I don't have a lot of friends, I guess. <laughs> well, so I'll share a little bit about the CEOs and the projects because I think that's um that's a challenge that we have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, these incentive dollars are reimbursement uh, funding. They work on re reimbursement funds. So we have worked with some of the CEOs, Green Tech, uh, Habitat for Humanity. We're currently working with CRP, Community Resource Project, uh, and uh, La Familia, also uh, some of the folks that we're working with. The challenge is, is the upfront capital. Right. You have to have upfront capital to pay for the entire project and then wait to get reimbursed. That is a challenge with the CDOs, right? The other challenge is we don't pay 100%. The guidelines do not allow 100% payment, so we pay up to about 60%. So La Familia wants to put in EV chargers. We can come in with 60% or 40% has to come up, come up out of their own pocket. They got to pay for all of it and then we reimburse the 60% at the end. So it's very challenging, right? So the folks that do meet the guidelines, the community priorities have been uh, Green Tech, 
they've met they've met the priorities where they said well we're not within the south sac foreign community but we are within the eac we are moving to zero emission and we are serving underserved community members uh pepsi has been a project also uh they they have the, the capital for it right uh but they are within the 8617 community and they do drive within the 8617 uh, boundaries and they are zero emission so they meet the community priorities right on top of the guidelines so those are some of the the challenges and benefits of, of the way the guidelines and uh the, the project funding works um these say this is pat shelby speaking um these are some of the safe dollars that have helped reimburse buses Going yes. zero emission buses for our school and our our walking corridors where our children are commuting. Yeah, so not necessarily the corridors, but the zero emission school buses. Yeah. And they've been a combination of community air protection incentive dollars, Carl Moyer. That's a big priority in our region. So we're trying to be all in with all our funding for for zero emission school buses. Okay. Carl okay. Moyer. Oh, sorry, Carl Moyer, Carl Moyer program is just another program that we administer from that comes from the California Air Resources Board. Different programs, different pockets of funds, uh, different uh, uh, targets, and just different but other programs. We administer a whole bunch of different incentives. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, if there are no, any, no more questions from the steering committee members, are there any questions from members of the public in this room? Do we have any questions from steering committee members or members of the public online? If you're attending online and you have any questions, please raise your hand. All right. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, if we want, uh, my name is Vince Valdez, you know, Latinos. Um, if we wanted to, con do we contact you if we want to have input on some of these uh, projects or uh, assistance on finding out how we can get them into the community? Do we contact you or who do we contact? What, what's the question again? Uh, if we wanted to have some input on some of these projects huh. or find out how to have the community give input. Yeah, so we we'll, we always send an email out to the steering committee and we say, hey, steering committee, uh, we're getting ready to do our, our priorities for our solicitation. Uh, does anybody want to participate? And sometimes we have more folks and sometimes we have a couple of folks. But but yeah, and it's open for you and for your affiliates. Um, CARB, though, I will say that CARB, though, the requirements for ARB, is not so much for the outside community, it's more so for the steering community. Mm -hmm. So we will have, um, uh, when Jaime and his team is ready to have that solicitation and have that input, uh, Sara is going to be sending an email to the steering committee. I just had one follow up. So yeah. solicitation is with the, um, they apply for the grants? Yeah, it's a call for, for the process. And will there be a workshop for the community to learn how to go through that process? Because I know I, I sent a few people last couple of years and, and they said the process was kind of cumbersome and, and they didn't complete it because they're like, oh, I don't think it's going to work for us. Yeah. Although they are driving trucks through the community and they are, you know, day to day doing business in here. But for the smaller uh, mom and pop type companies that are not the Fortune 500. Sir. So is there gonna be like workshops available or uh, possibilities for something like that? Yeah, so so we always hold a workshop uh, for solicitation, but, but what we also do is for any applicant who needs uh, additional um, help with the application process or just the entire project once they sign an agreement with us, our engineers work with them individually. So they can uh, work with one of our engineers all the way through the end of the project and our inspection staff. Uh, we also have, we went, a, we went another step further. And so let's say uh, Richard Pagon and, and his theater company wants to put in EV chargers, but you know they know, they know all kinds of stuff about theater, but not so much about construction and EV chargers. We've also set up, um, uh, some contractors that are electricians who would work with Richard 
to explain all of the process, permitting, power, and all of that, so that it could just be as easy for them as possible. So we that we have that set up in place as well. Thank you. Seeing another question. Uh, <clears throat> if I may, Richard Falcon, steering committee member, United Latinos. Uh, I will likely be reaching out individually to get a little more detail on the budget. The reason why I say this is because listening to the numbers, it is wonderful that we have this available to us. However, as we take a look at the breakdowns on there, uh, I want like to personally make sure that we are distributing in my opinion, and just my opinion, uh, equitably, where those dollars are going to. The reason why I say this, and I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a moment, is this committee has already been uh, subject to the, uh, shall we say, comments and communications from community members and organizations outside that feel that what we've accomplished so far, whether they are incentives, whether they are decisions about boundaries, projects, et cetera, was blocked. Yes. And so in doing so though, now we come together and we say, but we have a new way that we want to do things. But if the budget that we're talking about is still expenditures and such based on the previous way of doing things, which it sounds like it is, until we get to the new dollars, which then we see the change, I want to make sure that I, as a community member, as a representative of United Latinos, has all the detailed information to respond to some of those community groups, Absolutely. to some of those folks that are out there, so that I can help to explain and to hopefully diffuse some of the negative comments that will obviously be coming based on this, especially if we take a look at priorities and what those priorities that have been already selected, shall we say, but then making sure that as this steering committee reviews those priorities, that we are taking into account, again, some of the dissatisfaction that we have heard in the past. So I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. I'm just wondering from that standpoint of that one-on-one -on -one detail, who would be the best person to talk to? That's the number one question. And I'm talking about the previous budget, the incentives, everything still is on the table there. And then additionally, the new budget as we move forward into CERP. And so I can, uh, confidently tell where those dollars are coming from and if they seem to be going into a place that the community would like to see. So if someone can let me know, sorry, if you can just even send me an email as to who would be the right people to talk to or whomever, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Richard, <laughs> thank you for uh, the question. Um, absolutely. So we have, you know, we have heard the same concerns from community members as well as yourself. And so in the next upcoming months, uh, we are going to be bringing and discussing about the different buckets of money, right? Mark talked about implementation, Jaime talked about incentives, and how we're going to move forward with participatory budget, right? And so um, that's in the forthcoming meetings, and we should be uh, planning on how to you know, have that discussion. Thank you. you know, and I might add to that is <clears throat> it'll be part of this broader group discussion already. If you have any individual questions before I'm in sentence, would certainly be behind me. If it's if you need me, they'll direct you to someone more specific, but most likely behind me. So on the other side, I'm actually looking for a little bit more toward Janice in her new role on the uh, for the the you know the implementation funding, but I'm also certainly available. I'm still very much involved in it, but um, Jan will be taking a big lead role in that as we move forward. The last thing I will add is that if going to a participatory budget model is something that is decided upon, I would welcome 
the opportunity to help in any way I can as someone who was deeply ingrained in the participatory budgeting pilot that the city of Sacramento still has not completed. All the projects are still outstanding, but I would be happy to lend my experience and expertise as we, this committee looks forward to implementing a participatory budgeting model towards the budget. And we have asked uh, the California Air Resources Board um, to also provide us with some information on what the other communities have done across the state. Um, so again, so there's you know more information about what has been done for as well. Um, and this is Stephanie Williams, and so I was going to just ask for um, different, either a cheat sheet or uh, maybe a high level something written that kind of like explains um, the, the the different buckets, the different grants, um, and some of the, the capacity and the limitations of that. I know that there's going to be more information coming, but I'd like to be able to preview some of that uh, before we have a time and opportunity to come together and to discuss all of that. And so if there's some information available, I may, um, that you can share, um, um, that would be very helpful. And if we can get that out to all the steering committee members, however you can get that together. But uh, I would like to be able to, to read over that and, and the incentive that you talked about, Mark, as well, to have just a, a better understanding of that. Thank you. Thank you, steering committee members, for those questions and comments to advance your goals through the budget. Uh, does the district have any further items under district updates? Are we ready to proceed? Uh, I'm just going to say um, I'm really looking forward uh, to working with you all this upcoming um, couple of years. I think um, we have such a good opportunity to improve our process and to address some of the concerns that we have heard. Um, and really make a difference in reducing emissions in the community and reducing that air quality burden. So with that, I'll keep that short. Uh, you'll be hearing from me a lot anyway, um, but I'm gonna pass it to David to give a membership renewal. Yeah, uh, David again with the uh, Air District. I just wanna give a quick update on membership renewal. As you know, in the charter, beginning there, the uh, membership renewal reforms, uh, you can put here with the conflict interest form. So, uh, we'll be working, uh, I'll be working start to send them about uh, hopefully sometime this month or the end of the month. So, uh, yeah, we'll do some. Any questions uh, in person or online, feel free to raise your hand about the membership renewal or any other items covered by district updates. Just wanted to provide that opportunity since we sort of circled back uh, with the in person. All right, seeing no raised hands, we can go ahead and move on to the next slide. And um, this is steering committee recruitment. So I will go ahead and invite the colleagues to introduce um, a vote and go over the steps before introducing that vote. Okay, it's my, my turn here. And I'm going to speak up. Yeah. You have to speak up. Okay, so I'm not too sure where we're at on this with the uh, recruitment. So there was an email that was sent out and to everybody in regards to the uh, three applicants that we have for new members. Um, this goes in line kind of, so we only have two slots and we have three members. And so I was telling everybody, it's too bad we couldn't expand our committee today and include everybody. But we can't because that's a charter amendment. So we have a selection of two people and, and one of the applicants previously uh, was not uh, voted in because we didn't have enough slots last time. And that would be SAC EJC. I just wanted to let uh, remind everybody that they are still waiting to be admitted as a, a committee member. And they are one of the three applicants that we have today. And we only have two slots. So you only get to select two. And so... Um, Everybody's been passed out the paper ballots. We have our, uh, and online, they have uh, the same opportunity to vote, Sarah. Yes, so for online participants, um, you can please email the 8617 clerk um, with your two applicant selection. Um, two of the three applicants, you can email us with your, um, your vote and we will tally that. And 
So that was, yes. May I, may I have clarification, Mrs. is Pat Shelby speaking. All right, so uh, before us today, we have two residents and one organizational group. Yes. You said we have two slots. We have to, we need to come up uh, a residential mm -hmm. and then we would have room for a uh, organization. Yes, we would. Okay. Um, we also um, will be discussing charter amendment. Yes, that's coming so up that, in our that, next one of our next that's agenda one of items. Okay. Yes. All right, but right now, of those two, one has to be a resident. Mm -hmm. The other position can be a community organization. So the, no, to clarify that. So we have three. We have two spaces available. We have three applicants. Yeah, they can either be two residents, mm -hmm. so we can select resident one and two to fill those vacancies, yes. or one resident and um and then uh, and then one of uh well the other party would it would be second EJC. You know they would qualify by default as an organization if right. we only selected if we only move to select. Um, one of the residents. So those are the two items that we're looking at. So I think there's two points of discussion, you know, of really trying to decide um, if this group wants to, A, move forward with making the vote out of the two resident applicants, or if we want to um, decide if it's going to be um, a resident and an organization. And so those are the things that that we are. Uh, those are the items that are there. So of course we do recognize that anytime there's a vacancy, and because of our charter and the split, um, we can't take on another organization until we have that ratio met for our residents. And so um, I think that's one of the things that Vincent was um, indicating is that previously we had um, that application that was available, but because we did not have um, another resident. We, was, we were unable to take on um, SAC EJC, uh, but I believe that that was one of the things that we had talked about doing. So, um, um, so I would like to, um, I guess at this point, just to kind of hear what the what what the group is interested um, in in doing, because if we just vote blindly, it could just go all all, all kinds of ways. Um, I would say, um, as a committee member, I think it's important. I would like to see SAC EJC come on. Um, I'm just putting that out there, you know, that, um, and so, but that would only be possible if we were only able to make a decision on one, uh, one of the two residents. Um, and so I'll just pass it around and just open it up to see what anyone's comment is, because that may change the way that we vote a little bit tonight, the dynamics of the way that we vote. So let's say, for example, if we all decided that we wanted SAC EJC, um, then we would probably have a, I'm thinking, I'm just, you know, working out the dynamics that the vote would then be between the two residents. And that's what we would be passing the ballots for. Because I think if we put all three in the box, how do you, I don't even know what that is like. I don't even know how to do that, but, okay. Well, I, I guess we do. I guess we can figure it out. Okay, I'm sorry, I changed it. Anyway, um, I'm just I'm putting down my little shameless plug for Zach EJ. Anybody else thinking about how we can do this? Uh, Taylor Long, appreciate Stephanie's point of view there. I think, to be honest, I, EJC has been active, uh, robust, for uh, very opinionated. I think we know that they're they're capable of contributing to this uh, committee. I I think at the same time. Um, we need to be engaged on the grassroots level. If there's a resident that wants to be involved in something like this, we want to embrace them. And I think the way you do two vote where you have to pick one of the two residents, I think that's unfair. I think we're also biased because EJC has been the most vocal. So I think, you know, we haven't heard about the other two, you know, candidates, right? But to me, when somebody who lives in the community and wants to be an active voice, that in itself shows in terms of commitment, right? Or who knows how long they'll last, <laughs> they barely even give them a chance. If EJC doesn't get in today, I think their mission still stays strong, right? They're still going to be as opinionated, and we're still going to listen to them as much. Um, but I think they can also apply again. Okay, I'm not saying that's my fault. I just think that we have to give the focus on the resident just because it is that area, and I want to know how they feel and how they contribute, contribute to this group. All right, wonderful. Anyone else in the room want to make comments for that? All right, Rhonda. Okay, I am leaning toward uh, yeah. Sacramento uh, 
environmental justice coalition only because they they're still waiting they, wait, they didn't get it last time okay and then looking at the candidates and the residents one seems to have more <laughs> more experience in the community than the other so i look at that just saying you live here doesn't tell me what you bring to Robin, can you speak up Sorry. yeah just saying that you live here doesn't tell me what you're bringing to the table yeah, so I'd like to see that they're already involved in the community. Right. Any other in-person comments? I do see we have a steering committee steering committee member online who would like to make a comment. But before we pass it to them, would anyone else like to provide their input? Um, this is Pat. Once again, just as a point of clarification, the 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 reason why we're we're struggling this way is because. As we develop the charter, which can still be changed and amended, we always kept the resident balance just at least one body ahead of um, organizations that serve the community, but they are representing an organization. So if we were to vote tonight for one resident and one, um, it would be eight resident members, seven organizational members. That's how we would come out with our with our um, uh, numbering. So just so everyone understands who, who's online as well, that's where we're where the struggle is and why we why um, people were deferred from being able to join at the time because the balance would have been a misbalance. There would have been more community organizations and a dearth of community members. Thank you Just for that perfect. explanation, Pat. I'm new, so I appreciate it, and I'm sure others online um, appreciate that as well. I will now pass to, it looks like, Chris, um, who has their hand up. I just had a question. Uh, maybe I forgot. Um, how do we reach out to the uh, corporate entities like your tech arts and those individuals? Do you mean to uh, see if they're interested in becoming a member? Yeah, or... back when we were doing this, how, how did we go about reaching out to them to see if they were interested in being part of this? Because I know at one time, TechHeart was part of, uh, I believe, uh, 617. Well, I think we were, we were talking about uh, community members, residents, uh, community-based organizations, and then along with that are any businesses in the community as well who are interested in joining. So anybody's open to join. Uh, if we have friends we want to talk to, encourage them. Um, I just, you know me, I want more people on the committee. So it, it's up to us to put the word out, and as well as if they happen to be at the Air District website or on our new Clean Sack Air website, they can see that information as well. But I think this information was also shared amongst our partners and um, that information was put out. Um, and then again, also with steering committee members, whoever we shared the information with. I don't know if that particular entity was targeted, but um, again, to Vincent's point, that would be something that if we felt that someone would be a benefit to the steering committee and uh, they weren't aware of those vacancies, then it would, that it would be you know back on the committee to share that out. So if that's a group that you think would be um, um, a good fit um, for the work that we do, uh, Chris, then I would recommend that you reach out to them, um, you know, and talk about the group as there are vacancies available so that they um, would uh, consider working with us. Um, this is Pat once again, just as my head is old and so is my body. I just have a memory. We're talking, Chris is talking about Tyker. When Tyker was here initially, Tyker uh, came on and, and and served in some advisory capacity with us because Tiger had worked to get AB 617 passed mm -hmm. at the state level. And Tiger had, now Tiger's put out to individual um, um, uh, members in the resident, in the resident uh, who lived in the area who worked for Tiger as well to let them know that they had the opportunity as residents to, to be here, but they were in an advisory capacity as we were coming on uh, with that. And so that's that's what their role was at, at that time for, for Tiger. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, thanks for that history. That's helpful. I don't remember that. Not, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I can bring that to you. <laughs> 
All right. All right. Any further Ready? questions online? Nope. Not seeing any. So now it's time to vote. And, and on the way out, you can place your vote in the box or right there next to David, right next to your vote for Tito. Um, oh, okay. right in there. Right in there. And just a reminder to the folks, um, the voting members attending remotely to please email your selection um, of who you would recommend um, to the 8617 clerk at airquality.org. Air Okay. All right. So uh, moving into the next items would be the charter amendments that we uh, we talked about at the colleagues that we've talked about here at our meetings or uh, our previous Zoom meetings. And so now that we're in person, so we get to talk about the uh, first one we're going to bring up is a membership as committee member increase. And so it goes right along into the lines of the elections. And you guys know I've been saying that. Our, our worst case scenario is we get more people who want to be on our committee than we have slots available. And so that's what's happening this month. And so to alleviate that from happening, uh, we've talked about, and I think the committee needs to discuss how many members we want to actually have and increase our committee to. And I'm just going to throw out there, if we move to 21 members, we'll have room for the whoever doesn't get elected today and four more members. That would keep us at the uh, even an odd number of uh, 11 community members and 10 business interests or community-based organizations. And so um, if anybody has anything they wanna talk about on that, discuss it, and it would be a charter amendment and Stephanie's gonna tell us how the charter amendments work. And or I was wondering what that big stack of papers was over there. Thank Charter. you. Finally. Um, okay, and so um do we have discussion on the uh charter amendment of increasing our committee member capacity to a set amount? I threw out five. Stephanie wanted to do three. So and, and so but they are moving in um wait a minute. No. They are moving in even numbers, right? They because are we're one. already at a negative, we're already at 15. So yeah. I said we're going to increase it by six. So it's two, four, six. That's how it goes. So it's on page six in um, the document that was just passed out in the charter. And for those who are online, um, uh, you can come to our charter at our on, in our website. Uh, and uh, it's on page six under article three, committee membership. The committee will consist up to 15 voting members select, selected by the district. Um, so that is the number that you are looking to in, increase um, the membership by. You can, so historically, the district had, I mean, not the district, uh, the committee had wanted a uh, a recommendation in one meeting and then a vote in the next meeting. Yeah. So, so just to kind of add a little bit to that, so there's a couple of items here that, um, um, you know, the discussion is for the charter of them. We wanted to be able to have some discussion with you all um, here tonight in, so that you can have an opportunity to kind of think about it and then when we come back together at the next meeting, vote then. I think what we heard before previously is that sometimes we bring such subjects up, we talk about it, and then we rush to a vote, and then it's like, you know, there, there may be, you know, um, you might have thought about something a little bit later. So we did want to have an opportunity to discuss it. What does that look like? Go through um, all of these items that we have that would require a charter amendment and then vote on those things the next time we run. And so that's how we have it um, um, set up on the um, agenda tonight. So. Um, those are those three areas that will require a charter amendment. Um, the expanding of the community membership. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, meeting frequency, what that looks like moving forward, and then also um, the uh, stipends. There are some discussions that we need to have about um, um, stipends, and then we could go on it the next time around. So that's where we're at. Yes. 
quick question again, Richard, Paul, for United Latinos. As we talk about, and Pat, thank you for sharing the breakdown numerically of where we are residents and CBOs. I'm curious, is there a list as to which CBOs are members? And then, and I asked them specifically because just in the short amount of time I have been here, I know for myself, sometimes it's difficult to participate fully. And so what I wonder is from the CBOs and frankly, from those who are steering committee memberships, should we also amend the charter into some sort of expectation of participation? Because I've seen a lot of residents, but I haven't seen too many CBOs coming to the meeting. So that's why I was curious as to who those CBOs are. Just put that out there, not necessarily to call anyone out, but to talk about the fact that what we can do to make sure we are getting optimal participation. I think that's right. Uh, the, I know that the charter does have some things in and around attendance. I think we probably can go back and take a look at that. Um, and and part of that attendance, I know that there's some things either whether it's used or not, and what that looks like about who who you know about participation. Like there there's some things here. I think that's probably also something um, that we should all take a look at in the um, um, in in our charter and have some recommendations when we come back what that looks like about participation, or if we have enough time to address it, um, you know, on, on these on these topics that we're talking about tonight, what does that look like? Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Thank you. Yeah, Janice. Um, just to add to that, uh, on page 10, there is attendance and participation. And so there is language in there um, that discusses about when a member has failed to attend um, consecutive meetings and what would be the consequence of that. So um, if you were to think about charter revisions, um, that would be the paragraph um, and language that you would look at. Thank you for that. Um, and also just to say now, these are some items. Now we do have a couple of items that we are talking about um, tonight. And these were some of the things that recommendations that have come up in other meetings and that we have heard um, along the way. But this charter, we look at the charter every year. And so we're not just limited to these three items. These are the items that we're talking about tonight. But since we have these, I would you know suggest that everybody go back home again and look at all of the different areas to your point. Um, I'm Richard, like on participation, if there's any other place that we want to make an amend, uh, you know, uh, amend, please, you know, recommend some language or what that change is so that we can, uh, so that we can vote on it when we come back. And maybe we can share that information via email in between meetings so that um, nothing is lost, so that everybody has an opportunity to kind of read it, justification on it, and weigh in on it, maybe we can, you know, share that information out if we're not able to address everything um, um, here this evening and then voting when we come back together. Right? Right. So to remind everybody, so the three amendment, charter amendment topics that we were talking about today are uh, the members, steering committee member increasing our committee so we can bring on this, uh, the third applicant today at least and instead of not having the next person, not there's no room for the next applicants. We can increase our committee by two, four, or six. Kind of was the thought we had, and I'm shooting for six. That way, we don't have this problem. And I'm hoping, and I feel like we're going to get more applicants this year than we have in the past because we're doing more outreach in that effort, and it's working. And so, Ward's a new person here today, and then uh, we have three applicants. In waiting with only two slots so that's the one that the second one is meeting frequency and so uh, we have talked about meeting every month right is that what we're talking about and so i don't i didn't want to sure if that was a charter amendment or discussion. just a discussion and so uh these are the topics that we do need to have votes on coming up and <laughs> and i know that it feels like a rush and everything, but I sure like to vote on all this stuff today and have it start next month. But if we discuss it today, I'll just say it because I've been talking about these things for a while. But if we can discuss it today, vote it on it next month, and then I'm not sure when they if they happen immediately or not, but they go effective immediately. But this is the discussion today. Vote is next month, and so if there's any discussion 
on whether or not we want to meet uh, frequency and in person for the rest of the year. Now's the time for us to discuss that and committee stipends. And so now that we're meeting more and, uh, and the outreach committee has been meeting uh, every month. And so the SERP meeting has been meeting every month. And so we were uh, discussing the stipends for the committee members who are meeting more frequently. And along with those meetings, there's more work in between and not a complaint. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, in order to get more committee for committee members to participate and or community members to be fair to the community members that were asking to participate on these committees, the possibility of offering stipends to these individuals as they come aboard. And so that's where this discussion has come. I'm all for all three of these amendments. By the way, I think they're going to be helpful for us to expand on what we're doing to encourage more people to participate and and, and my experience with the community members, we offer the stipend and, and they feel like they're getting uh, reimbursed to be here and participate and participation level increases. And so I'm just looking forward to being able to uh, hear discussion on these topics. And, uh, and I'm all for meeting every month in person and or hybrid if, if that's if the owl is working and the, the Zoom link is working, can you guys see me? I can't see myself, but I don't know. But okay, it seems to be working. And so a lot of my different other organizations I'm working with, actually United Latinos is on the other side of the complex here and they're meeting on an owl as well. So they're in for, we've been doing it for well over a year now. And so, um, but us meeting in person is gonna help us because we have a lot of things we're working on. If we officially go into the CERN process, we're going to have a lot to discuss and a lot to talk about in, in this upcoming year. And I'm excited about working with Janice on all those projects as well. <laughs> One more, if I may. Looking at the table of contents only, I'm presuming as far as our charter goes, boundaries for us are not in the charter. Is that a correct statement? Correct. correct. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Janice first. Yeah, so um, for the meeting, uh, the frequency of the meeting, uh, you can turn to page nine in the charter under article five meetings 5.1. Um, currently what it says is that the committee shall plan to hold at least one regular meeting each month every calendar year. Um, and I think it also says we can have special meetings yeah, uh, in section 5.3 under special meeting um, where we can have additional topics uh, if the steering committee and the district um, agrees. Yeah. So with that meeting, so with the meeting frequency, there, um, there's nothing that, uh, we don't need to amend any language that's in the charter because it makes a provision. We just need to decide as a steering committee that yes, we want to move to meeting monthly, if that's what we want to do. The language is already there for us. We just have to decide um, what that looks like, if, that, if that's what we want to do. Wait, are we, are we already meeting well, monthly? Uh, what was that question, Laura Rhonda? For are we you? already meeting monthly? Yeah. May, I, may I inject what's again, yeah. memory? Not a <laughs> memory. Uh, we moved to having our official meeting um, uh, with the district mm -hmm. to quarterly uh -huh. because of the severe budget cuts we went under. Um, and now going into the CERT, as we had discussed very early on, we would need increased frequency of meetings. So the charter was built on with the um, idea that we would go through our, our initial and be moving on into search and that we would be regularly having meetings. So we moved ourselves to, we would continue to be monthly, but we would do those as the community engagement portion of our meeting because we did not have the district here every month. But at this, my, my comment to this is at a CERP, there is no way that we can go through and complete a CERP or meeting any less frequency than once a month. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to either have to have special meetings or you're going to have, have subcommittee meetings that are happening all in the interim. 
between those official meetings as well. Otherwise, we will not be able to meet the goal. And just a reminder, the SERP committee is already in the meeting. So we are working in behind the behind the scenes until we get the SERP nomination process, which we'll discuss today and hopefully vote on. Thank you. Do we have any other in-person discussions before we move to the virtual comment? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Adrian. Uh, you'll go first. Yeah, and we'll then... go. It's just to say, I feel like the train is picking up really fast right now, right? And it's great that we're taking a lot of folks in, but the, the journey's been really, really long and tedious. And so for them to hop on and, and expect them to fully adjust is really, really hard. So I think you know, part of it is the style and part of it is being nurturing. This is a family. Big Brother and Sister got to carry their, their, their folks. But we need to have like a transition team to really get them on board. It takes us years and years to get to where we're at and to expect way or anybody else to come on and get to get this. It's not we drop up, we lost a bunch of really good folks already. And I really thought that we were able to disconnect you know, with them because we we were so caught up with getting our stuff going that we didn't look back and said we should have held our hands with more. I don't know. I mean I the, the guy the, the, the I teach kid, we we missed it. Okay. I know. It's early. It's early. It's early. We want to hear from both three. We want to hear from both three. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and then did you have a question? Yeah. So, uh, so Adrian ran with Valley Vision. We're a community nonprofit uh, in Sacramento. Um, I was looking at the district's website. You guys were talking about like affiliations of specific members, and it surprised me a little bit because um, I was looking at the, basically the list of you guys and your affiliations. And it has, um, you know, Vince and Richard as the CBO. You guys are representing yourself as CBO. You know, Latinos, Bacos, CBO. Um, whereas Stephanie Williams and Chris, um, Bishop Chris Baker, are self, so residents. So it's just kind of interesting how, you know, you might be a resident and a CBO rep, but pay careful attention, I think, to how you're classified as a member, because it didn't surprise me. Thank you. It's Thank on the you. website. Thank you. Thank you for that. We may need yeah. to take a look at how it's self identified. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to turn it over to yeah. Chris? Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I have two questions, but Pat pretty much summed up my first question. The second question is expanding committee membership. Um, maybe I misunderstood that. Do they have to be like a resident or can they be like, for instance, I've asked several doctors with well space to look into this and so far three of them showed an interest in uh, coming to the meetings and whatnot to extend a medical point of view such as allergies and things like that so would they have to be as a like a regular committee member or a resident or a business so with that, so with that, it, it, you know, it could be either way. So as we're talking about tonight about expanding the membership. So as vacancies, if we do move to vote to either the two, four, or the six, because one of the goals is to maintain um, a odd number according to our charter. If there was a vote, we we don't want to be stuck with an even number, right? We want to be able to um, always have a, a majority vote. Um, and then also um, in lines with the um, resident to business or CBO of um, ratio, as long as there is a vacancy that is available and there is space in that particular area for the CBO, then yes, well space could come, they could apply just like anyone else to be a part of that. Um, also with that, uh, they could also take on the position that they are just going to be a partner with us. Um, it just really depends on their level of interest what they want to do, what their capacity is to work with the steering committee. You know, are they going to be able to give um, someone um, on their staff time to come and participate as we're moving towards the servant and that kind of work with us? Or do they want to come in as advisory capacity and provide us with some information um, that is going to be helpful for us moving forward? So I think whatever wherever they land and what they want to contribute there's room for there's room at the table for um either way in an advisory capacity or to um, um to apply for membership anyone else want to add anything to that 
Okay. All right. I just got a question. Sarah, are you taking notes underneath the screen? Well, oh, it not. has a closed caption. Or is I don't know if it's closed or open. I think it's technically closed captions are on. Um, that was another way we could make sure that it can hear us. So if the people online can't hear us very well, it is transcribing everything we're saying live. So there's so captions that are AI notepaper too? Yeah, yeah it's, it's AI and it's putting captions on there. So we need so we need discussions on there. So going back to this, we have those items. Um, um, are we would we like to? Is there anyone has any more comments? Would we like to move on? Not move, but are are we open to expanding the membership to either two, four, or six, and bringing that to a vote next meeting? Anyone are we concerned about that? I'd like to hear the vote next meeting. Okay. Right. Me too. I'm open to it. This is Robin. Ron is open to it. Anyone online? Are you open to it? To moving to um, some kind of vote the next time we come with either two, four, or six? Feel free to either raise your hands, online committee members, or unmute and hopefully state your opinion. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Thank you. All right. Um, the other uh, um, item that we talked about was meeting frequency. How are we? I, I know uh, uh, Ms. Pat really talked about that we are just not going to be able to uh, move if we move towards a, a certain that that is just not something that we can accomplish meeting with the district quarterly um, and, and for our community engagement meetings and our subcommittee meetings and that so that that frequency would have to increase. Is there anyone here that has issue with that? This in favor of that. Um, is that something that we could move to vote on next time of maybe meeting monthly? Or if anyone else has any other recommendations on what that frequency should be, we can kind of put that on the table. I did see another online meeting me committee member unmuted and then muted themselves. So um, Jesus, did you want to unmute or have anything that you wanted to say before we cut you off before you could speak? No, I'm okay. Thank okay. you. I just wanted to give you that. Okay, proceed. Okay. Are we okay with meeting monthly? At least monthly. At least monthly, and that would be a hybrid. Uh, do we, are, are we open to still doing hybrid? How do people feel about that? The district is supportive. The that. district is supportive of hybrid. So we do have the, we do have the capacity to, to do a hybrid. I'm, this is Pat Shelby speaking. I'm going to um, uh, support that we continue to do the hybrid increasing as people could come face to face together. But um, if I had tested positive for COVID today, I was tested. Mm. Um, and I had to go to the doctor. The doctor says, "Oh, you sound sniffly. Why don't we tend to?" <laughs> anyway, so I should not have. I should not have. <laughs> I have severe allergies. But if I had COVID, I would want to use. The exactly. virtual option. I would not want to come and make you sick. Okay. So, <laughs> but I. But, but with that, I think that um, it, it it's a real issue, and each one of us has our own individual health concerns or health struggles. Um, but if this will also permit people to be able to participate more fully with that, um, as well as finding out how to do it in our committee meetings so that we can be able to join it online virtually into the meetings uh, as our committee meetings. I do want to point out on page 19, um, we do each sign a commitment under play and active role. Uh, bullet number four says committing to attending scheduled spirit committee meetings in addition to the few hours of preparation between meetings as needed, um, as well as attendance at occasional town hall meeting and or subcommittee meetings to share the workload of the CSC. We signed this. We said that's what we would do. So, and I'm saying this as a person who missed time. As you guys know, I work I work out of town and I've made the commitment to, to, um, to meet with you. Even if I have to be gone, I will meet virtually. Um, but the other is for those of us or for those folks that life has overrun their time that they can be able to commit here, we need to reach out soulfully 
gently, but we need to ask them to relinquish that position and let's fill with an active member who will actually do the work because we need work done. Well said. Richard? Richard Paul Flanagan, United Latinos. One other point as we, it's not necessarily a charter change, but maybe a change into, as we talk about outreach. I recently became familiar, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Developmental Disabilities Service Organization nearby here, who works exclusively with those in the deaf, blind, and neurodivergent communities. They are currently doing amazing work with working in those communities to bring forward information and awareness of environmental justice, climate, air quality, health effects, those things. And in the discussions I've had with them, they feel very left out. And so as we continue our process, I would suggest finding ways for us to be able to be more inclusive with that disabled community. Hence why the virtual can work out well, the transcriptions can work out well, those kind of things like that. Wonderful, thank you, thank you for that. I think that's really, I think that's really great. Um, so definitely, again, moving to expand the uh, the membership, we have the ability to do that. And then also that outreaching, as I had indicated to uh, uh, Bishop Baker, you know, for those uh, for those groups that we feel like would be an asset, let's reach out. Let's reach out and encourage them to uh, apply. Let's reach out to those residents or those community members and encourage them to um, to apply. Uh, or to come in as an advisory capacity, depending on you know what, what they're able to do, what they're able to do. All right. Um, so it looks like we're good with meeting frequency, and that we will be that will be an item that we'll be voting on um, the next time. The other one is is stipends, and so this kind of goes to the district as well, um, because if we are moving forward and we're we're asking. Um, or making recommendations that there will also be a stipend for those subcommittee meetings, outreach meetings, CERT meetings, those types of things um, that, um, of course, that will have to go back to the district to make sure that they would be able to um, meet that um, as far as the budget is concerned. And so I want to put that on the table um, and, and to bring that to, uh, to, to, uh, to Janet and to Mark. Um, those, those items, but are we okay as a steering committee? Are we um, in favor of, of bringing that to a vote about um, increasing the stipends or extending the stipends to our um, committee, our, our subcommittee groups? Mm -hmm. uh, this is Pat. I would be interested, but before I vote on it, I would want to know uh, once again, what's our budget uh, mm -hmm. impact? Uh, what would be the what the requirements needed to be met to qualify for for, for funding? It's not just sitting butt in chair, but do we actually do something <laughs> to, yeah. to make it happen? Um, uh, and, and so, with that, I, I think we just need to flesh that that part out a little bit more to see how we can do it. And it would change also if you're 17, 19, or 21. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, you don't need just, it. we need what well, we need to be real. So we're, right. we're, we're, this, this is real. We're playing with real money, and we're playing with money that belongs to the community for the betterment of the community. So how are we going to do it? And how do we do it effectively? And how do we have it where it's not just being taken, but it's actually there's something coming back from that payment happening. Um, so I think that we can all put make some type of uh, some type of recommendation on what that what looks like. So we know that um, so far we're looking at increasing membership either two, four, or six. Um, and so I would bring it back to the district to say, what does that look like um, as far as stipends for uh, uh, outreach and subcommittee meetings um, at two, four, and six if those are are doable. Um, and then, um, I mean, and then also, I, you know, up to two. We have our outreach meeting, and we have our we have our CERT meeting. And some people are both some on one. So I, I, so I'm, I'm recommending, or what I'm asking the district court, anyone else can kind of add on to that, is that would be up to two subcommittee meetings, um, depending on where we fall. 
that could be subcommittee meeting, conference, whatever that looks like, whatever all the other stuff it is that we do in addition to meeting here, then it would be for for two additional meetings and at those at those numbers. Um, and if we can get the breakdown on that, that would be possible for. Yes. Are you asking for the impact on our, our, our well, the, the dollar amounts? Well, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. That I, I'm asking that the district will let it either you know they have to speak to it now or they have to speak to it later. But so is um, just for clarification, mm -hmm. is the request uh, up to two additional stipends? So that would be uh, three per month. Yes. Okay. At two, four, and six additional. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when I was looking at this, it looks like there's a nine hundred dollars per year limit per person on, on the attachment. So um, that's twelve meetings a year per person. Is in is in the chart, whether, whether it's in the budget. Sure. And that and so if and so depending on what the budget land, that will have to be amended as well. Because this is where we're next because we're meeting quarterly. So, but when we initially started, I think we were meeting we were meeting more frequently and things were reduced down to quarterly because there were budget constraints. So we kind of moved up and down based on where that is. And so that's what we would be asking that the district to provide that to us. I want to ask the committee members to um, consider the time. Yeah, and yep. maybe wrap up this item. If there are no further questions. Okay. Sure. All right. 21 members at, for the whole year would be $25,200. And at 15, I think it's $18,000. So it's only a $4,000. And as we also consider thinking about expanding membership, I was expanding boundaries. Right, then you're also thinking about you know the number of members you are also bringing on from those expanded right. boundary areas because right. you're not just going to expand boundaries and not right. take on right. representatives. Right. And so, just as you guys are thinking about the changes, just keep that in mind. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm a finance guy, right? But, <laughs> you know, I will make it pennies of a dollar over here, right? I mean, if you really get it for the money, you wouldn't be here, no. right? So just to quibble about these things kind of make me feel like, you know what, I do like that $90 check every month I get. So the kids don't have to eat ramen anymore. Why would you say Man, if I would want more of our money, we will not be here. And I know we have to talk about it, right? We have to talk about it because it's not our money, but I like it when the younger folks, people who left or didn't come be able to do, come here because they're reimbursed for some type of transportation costs, right? But I just think in a, in a whole broad scheme of things, this is very, very minimal. The very least you make is to say, we appreciate you being here. Here's a small little gesture of our appreciation. But our budget doesn't allow it yet. We're working the numbers. <laughs> yeah. We're working. Okay. So I think the last item is the SERP community boundary discussion before we move into subcommittee updates. Sure. So many, um, 15 minutes. Oh, that's what we got. Um, we gonna, I think we can include that with the third updates if we want so we can mm -hmm. move forward. Okay. We are right enough. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then uh, I will pass it to Rhonda then for the outreach subcommittee update. Okay. Um, the last two months we used our monthly meeting, which is the, the third Wednesday of the month, uh, and we actually went out. And um, met with two different uh, neighborhood associations. And Janice and I partnered uh, together to put together a website, not a website, a PowerPoint slide. Um, very nice one. It's on the screen now. And we have a survey. So we updated the survey. All of that is on our website so that people can go and take that survey. And we went to um, Meadowview Neighborhood Association on. Monday, I believe it was last Monday. Last was it? Was it Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday. 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 Okay, and then Monday. Wednesday we went to Thursday. Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Thursday. Okay. We went to the name uh, Mesa Grande yeah. Association, <laughs> and we presented. And some of you were there virtually too. So uh, 
we got great feedback uh, that we're gonna you know consider. So that's what it's all about. Our whole purpose of this was to get into these other areas of, of communities and find out what they what get their feedback so we can know how to do our study. <laughs> you know, because we had some valid points that they made and had some interesting questions. So that's what we've been doing. And I don't mind doing that because that's still outreach. You know, yeah. I think it was better than just having a little Zoom meeting and just chatting about what we're gonna do and want to do. We did something. Right. And we got something back from it. And so I'd like to see us go in that direction. There's other, we hope to go to other events in the, in the community um, and make ourselves known, like maybe the Sweet Potato Festival or, or the Banana Festival. I mean, there's a lot of things coming up. And then, of course, the, the Florence Square is, is year round. And there's always people there. So we're looking at ways that we can go where the people are. Uh, we have business cards, so that way we can give them a card so they have a QR code, and they can just uh, go on that QR code and scan it and go to our website. So that's what we've been doing. I also would like for us to consider um, if we can ask for more money for our outreach budget, because we're going out more. There's fees to table it. <laughs> so we're gonna go we'll around the money pretty quick when we table like like the one festival that's coming up. It was your festival. Oh man, are you not talking about me? It's not his festival, it's the literary festival, but it's three three hundred dollars to table. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some of them are less, some of them are more. So we wanted to consider asking the steering committee about increasing our budget. That we've used by what we have right now. Now I still have to maintain enough in there to uh, pay the annual updates and things. And then we also, <laughs> I had to um, increase, I guess, the space for the survey for the responses. I didn't have a chance to tell you guys about it. I had to do it to make the survey work. Mm -hmm. So I had to send in $76 oh. out of my money, <laughs> my, my personal money. So I'm going to get reimbursed for it. But, but, I, but those yeah, are things. Yeah, they have the memory. Yes, because it only allowed for five responses. 25. 20, 25 responses. And so we, we have to tell a thousand because if we're, if we're passing out the survey all over the place, we're going to get more than 25 responses. <laughs> Uh, and can we get into the schools now, which might be a little bit cheaper as far as getting to some of the parent leadership groups or some of the fairs that the schools have mm -hmm. for uh, um, at, the, in, at the individual campus as well? Yeah, we had talked about that too. Mm -hmm. So we're not just focusing on the, the oh, ones yeah. that have table thing where you have to pay, but we're looking at various things. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we're yeah. also meeting with Mangan um, Neighborhood Park Association uh, this Thursday as well um, to share, to share, you know, like what, right. the, the work that we've been doing and, yeah. and the survey. And then next month they're coming to my neighborhood association, which will be um, going to the Creek Valley High Community Association. Right. And I need somebody else to speak next week. So it'll be Janice and somebody else. Okay. Um, there's a question. Uh, Mr. Feynman, uh, the site of the district. If, if there's an opportunity to share booths, is, is that an opportunity that you guys would take advantage of? Because yeah. uh, the Transportation and Climate Change Division usually goes out to different events and festivals mm -hmm. for things like for all or for all programs and you know, I don't think you take up an entire booth, but yeah. if there's a if, if there's an option to partner, is that something that you're interested in? Yes. 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 So, yes. yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Like yeah. I a festival with 20 organizations. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody up in that car. We have that much to go. All right. I'm standing in the whole thing. And, and and just just so everybody knows, last year I attended the uh, the lunar bigger they, they festival, don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, yeah. and we walked on. I walked on, and so I asked Tito, "Hey, can we can I get a table there?" So, uh, so I made my own space, and so doing that a few times last year, and and, and I'm a participant of a lot of different organizations, and we just asked for small donations, and so 
we welcome everybody who comes in, but I mean, if we're going to be able to support the community in a small way by getting a table or two tables, our own three tables, that's what we, we should be considering doing with the funds that we've been allocated to do outreach in the community with. Because I'm going to tell you right now, everybody I talked to at that event, they were interested in health and air quality, and I, I was tabling next to the Sutter Hospital people, so they had everybody coming in there, they said, if you want, and I had the little chart for the signs, and so it was it was impactful. But um, supporting the community is something we need to be, is, is part of what this whole thing was designed for, community empowerment, and in a small way, we're still helping the community by, by purchasing a table at their events so we can be there responsibly. And so I just, I, I, I know we're laughing right now, but I mean, and, and we can share tables, but I mean, we should be able to support these community events when we want to go table there and bring, and bring, and, 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 and more than just Rhonda or me show up or, or I don't know who showed up with me last year. I don't know. Somebody must have. Well, but, I, I was there with you, but I was running the place. So. Oh, that's right. That's fair. Right. That's yeah. fair. I got pictures. I got Listen, pictures with them. Yeah. You never charge car or A, you know, yeah. AB67 because I'm a part of the organization committee. But it does feel embarrassing when other organizations are supporting us. And yet I'm telling my friend over here, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get, you know, carve in here for a little bit. Just like you can pass out flyers. As opposed to an active member of the community that says, hey, you support your organization. It, it is so hard right now, you guys, to ask for grant funding. This SMUD rejected us. One of the biggest Lunar New Year event of the year, right? And with no rhymes or reason whatsoever. And what do you say to a big organization like that? And so now, guess what? Where's all the money coming from? Yep, Peter's family. So I don't have a quite problem fitting any one of us in. What does that say about our organizations, our commitment to the community? And Tito has, and Tito has said we have a table at the dinner. Yeah, I, I hate, hate, I hate, I hate you know, have to be in the, in the back corner every time. Hey, go come back, come back in here. Yeah. Right. We have our community is on their resources to also coat tables. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. That, that's the partnership. Yep. So we heard you, Vincent. We definitely heard you. So where we can, where there are, we, we do do that. Um, and then we also partner. So I think that's great. More, and we'll I'll push that back to you to have that out at your um, subcommittee meetings on <laughs> on on where yeah, when you part, when you partner and when you um, request funding um, um, for that. Uh, just kind of like going back to our surf um, our surf community on um, boundaries, and so that was really the discussion in and around. Are we open to expanding the boundaries? We had this discussion before. I think that um, as we're expanding membership, then that also can be included in that number. That's just one of the recommendations that I'm that I'm putting out. Um, I don't know how any of you all. So I know we're running out of time, but. Um, is that something that we want to look at voting on next month? Next month, when we come back together about um, revising or amending the charter to it's to uh, bring on um, additional uh, um, boundaries. Yes. Yes. You're, you're for that. Just a place. Yeah. And the, the last discussion at the third meeting we had was including the boundaries from Medley Road all the way to. Freeport Boulevard, Freeport Boulevard, up to Fur Ridge Road, and, and then expand. That would that way we would include the airport and the city corporation yard in our boundaries. So that was a little farther than we originally had talked about on 24th Street, but it's only really just a mile bigger, but it does include encompass the uh, the airport and and the communities surrounding it as well. So is there anyone on my oh, <laughs> Um, so that's a really good point, and I am so part of this survey is to get information from the community in terms of what areas they are concerned about, right? And so if you, um, if you guys haven't had an opportunity, I think you guys should click on that. And um, just also as a, a, a reminder that some of the the criticism, right, about development of boundaries is that they're uh, there was there needed to be more community engagement and input from the people outside the boundaries. And so um, the outreach committee, like Rhonda said, we've been 
doing outreach in outside of these communities to get that information to inform you all mm -hmm. about where you would like to expand to. So I think that's also important is making sure that we get that that um, input before we do that because we're going to end up in the same place. Right. Mm -hmm. So 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 what this discussion is is just are, are we open to expanding the boundaries moving for both? When we come back next month, and if we vote to expand the boundaries, that doesn't mean that we're going to, at that time, determine what those boundaries are going to be. We're just saying we're going to extend the boundaries. We'll get information from the survey, um, other community input, and then we'll determine what those areas will be. But next month, the vote will just be simply to expanding the boundaries. And then we'll, then, then we'll start having conversations about what those boundaries look like. Are we good with that, of, of, of having a vote for that next week? May I make a motion that we um, ask to be in the, the acceptance uh, for expansion of boundaries for uh, next agenda? Yes. That's my motion. I second that one. All right. Rhonda. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item. Thank you. <laughs> can, can we get motions for all three of the charter oh. women? Oh, that was a that was not a charter I mean, So no. okay, fine. It's a discussion. We have a Adrian. You have a discussion. Yeah. When you guys are ready, we're ready. We're ready. Okay. We're ready. Yeah. Um, so the the survey that this is a question for the artist. The survey that you guys have out, you said, is for communities outside of the six seventeen area, right? Not specifically. Not specifically, but, but we've been doing additional outreach okay. in those areas. I was wondering kind of like what, so, you know, like kind of what what neighborhoods would be eligible to complete that survey? Like anywhere in the South County or anywhere in South Sac? South Sac. Okay. okay. I took the survey last year and I took a survey from somebody who lived in Arizona. <laughs> okay. Because they were in Sacramento and they lived here, but they're from Arizona. They were going back, but they were here for the summer. And so I don't know if, if it matters or not. And so when I'm doing the outreach, at, at, and I'm going to be at the New Year's event, I'm hoping to be at the Potato Festival the same weekend, and I'm hoping to go to uh, Cesar Chavez Park in Southside Park. And be, I'll, be do, I'll be taking the AP 617 survey with me when I go to those events. So I mean, that's a great question. It, does it matter who we, who we survey? Yes. Mark, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say, I think these are all great questions. Both, you know, hey, does it matter? Yes, no, where are you at? You know, really, this is all just be great information for you yourselves to utilize. Doesn't mean that, you know, someone says go all the way up to uh, Yuba City, you know, skipping the county lines here, that you guys have to say yes. Um, for those that you may remember back when we first did everything, you know, the first meeting that words, we even had some communities south attend these meetings, say, hey, why don't you come south? The south voice hasn't been as loud the last couple of years. Instead, you know, we've been saying, hey, further north, further west, you know, so I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. My point is, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer to this. I think it's just the information for yourselves to consider and to, you know, for your consideration in general. And I want to add too. So there were some people who lived in the north area, Del Paso Heights, and uh, and by McClellan, and I, I encouraged them to because that information is still valuable to us and to the Air District in formulating other plans and other ideas or other uh, potential committees as well. So yeah, I think the gathering of information we just have to decipher which one is actually applied to our areas and and where we're talking. But that that information is still valuable, very valuable. All right, I want to move us into new business and upcoming meeting topics, just because I have not done the best job at keeping time here. Um, and we really do need to proceed so that I can get you out within the next reasonable amount of time. <laughs> so uh, I want to ask members if they have new business. Um, I know that Vincent has an event. Is there anyone else who has anything or should we pass to Vincent first? Uh, okay, we're, what are we doing right now? The Dia de la Tierra event. Oh yeah, we're gonna, uh, so the United Latinos, uh, La Familia, and a few other organizations that I've contacted, we're, we're speaking of doing an Earth Day in South Sacramento for the Latino community, and that would be Dia de la Tierra. And uh, the theme is going to be, people of today can change the climate of the future. 
And I would stagger that in Spanish if I tried it, but it's the gente de hoy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Karen, it uh, uh, Okay. The climate of the future. Yes. So, uh, and, and so it, the people of the day can change the climate of the future. And so uh, I've talked about having an Earth Day in South Sacramento for years. And so we're going to have one here in La Familia. And so I sent a budget to the Air District. And so it, it's uh, it's just a, uh, the beginning of the budget, but it's going to be a really nice event, and it's going to be a perfect event for us to utilize our resources and gather information in regards to the surf, in regards to health and, uh, uh, and uh, air quality. And so there's going to be a lot of other things going on, a lot of other resources, a lot of other climate change events, because if you guys don't know, I've, I've participated in a lot of different climate uh committees and organizations in the community. And so uh, we'll have the Sacramento Climate Coalition. We'll have live music. We're going to have food vendors. We're going to have workshops. We'll hopefully have a play from uh, maybe a, a local theater, uh, theater group. And, and that would be awesome. And so, uh, and so just uh, having that kind of support, again, just very similar to buying a table, renting a table at, at a local event. I'm hoping maybe we can support putting the event together. And La Familia has graciously offered us our, our the site and facility here, and also, I believe, uh, more resources as well. And so that's just one thing coming up in the community. Uh, like I said, I'm looking for people to volunteer with me at and table at the uh, New Year's Lunar event. And we're looking to get so many to, uh, people to table um, at the Sweet Potato Festival at the Canal um, Community Center. I believe that's February 10th. And uh, I think there was a list of upcoming things that I have, but those are the first two or three in, in this year that are coming up. So. I was just going to ask if we can have the date so that we can, the, the calendar can be sent out or so we know when these things are coming up. That's it. Yes, yes. We're, we're making a calendar. Yeah, yeah so the, the Dia de la Tierra day would be April 13th here. And Rhonda said that she's working on a calendar. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Vincent, is there a request um, that you're making with the steering committee specific request uh, for the Dia de la Tierra event? Yeah, for support. Um, yeah, sure. If you want to uh, sponsor it up to two thousand dollars, <laughs> well, my budget was ten thousand. I don't think we have it to put up here, but but then there's a lot that goes involved with putting on a bid at this size. And so there's entertainers, there's uh, uh, vendors, there's going to be prizes, awards, and, and and a variety of different things. And security. We I included a lot of things in the budget, and we may have not have to spend all that much money, but a amount of support that was ten thousand, and so I was thinking five thousand. I don't know why I said two thousand, but uh, yeah, I think it happened. There. But uh, so I, I don't know what this, these are things that we haven't done as a committee before. But but community outreach and community engagement is something that is very into the heart of what we're talking about doing now, especially moving into the the surf process. So. So and, and just so you guys know, we have a one point two million dollar budget that goes through every year, and in, in far as as money that we spend for eighty six point seven and implementing the process, and so the incentives is a whole different bucket of money, and so I think there's enough money for us to do something like that. Yes. So would it be helpful to have Bill come back next month with the outreach uh, budget, budget, um, so that you can and look at it as a whole? I can get that. Okay. Yeah. Rhonda, can get that. That. <laughs> so Rhonda, can you ask Bill to do it? Oh, we can ask him for a report out. Yes, I did put that on once before. I put that on our last meeting. Yeah, so would about. the process be to uh, the first for us to replenish the outreach budget to its original thirty thousand? That was twenty five. Twenty five thousand. Try to give you. A, try to give you a raise. I know. I know. Twenty five thousand, <laughs> and then this these funds would come out of the outreach budget. So I think it's several these are the complicated the, the lack of participatory budgeting that we do here. And so these are the complicated questions that come out of when right. we want to do things. Right. So I think um there's a several step process, right? Like we're gonna come back and share with you all and work on what the budget looks like. Um, then we're all gonna decide how we're gonna allocate some of I mean, a lot of funding is also, I mean, for community emission reduction planning. It, to develop a plan program, 
um, is a lot of staff time, right? It takes research, it takes um, development. And so the district right now is trying to figure out what that staffing looks like. And um, then the rest of that is also then can be allocated into different areas. And we can bring that back to the steering committee to have that discussion. Jens, if I may, real quick, in part, because I think this is coming up fairly soon, fairly quick. Yes. You know, really, it's sort of going to go into what is still already in your outreach budget. Right. Yeah. You may already, and then that's the decision for sure. this body. Mm -hmm. You know, when the district allocated an original allocation for outreach, you know, the only, I don't even want to call it cash, because that's sort of wrong word, was the relation with it having for outreach items. Right. It sounds like this would be that. But then the question just is, you know, I'm just going to pick a number. You know, there's still 20,000 left. You know, this group may say, yeah, two or five is, is a fine number. If there's 10 left today, but that's just a decision for right. yourselves get to make. Well, right. My and question is, shall we be flinched as it gets? Well, that's right. part of what we have to see with the future budget. Right. Right. Yeah. With that, we haven't gotten that yet, right. so we can so we can make a determination. Where is our where is that next resource? And then what are we leaving to the certain piece? Right. So, I mean, this could be part of our. Right. Well, we our still have, have to. We still have to. We still have to look at it. But I mean, to me, this is something that's has to come out of current budget, and we have to make that determination out of current budget, and we, what we put out. So that seems to be And I can well, see Chris, Chris okay. has, well, we on the hand up. Chris, a committee member has their hand up on. Okay. Chris, would you like to unmute? Yeah, I, I like what I'm hearing, but I uh, just had an, an idea. Um, can we say South Sacramento Earth Day uh, sponsored by La United Latinos and others? Uh, I think we're going to have a big sponsorship, uh, a big banner that says uh, Dia de la Tierra, Earth Day, and it's going to have all the list of sponsors that are going to be on below it. We're not going to be the only sponsors for sure. And there's a lot of different people who already said that they want to contact other organizations and, and, and participate and and I'm just going to tell you right now, that people are talking about Earth Day, and so people want to get involved, and they want to do the outreach to the same communities that we're talking to right now. And so this is going to be the vehicle that opens the door for a lot of different uh, organizations to participate as a partner with. And so it's going to, it's going to be exciting, but... Go down. I, I agree. All right. And we would like to have Wells based on that sponsorship uh, sign as well, Chris. Okay. If, if possible. Sounds good. I'd like to pass it to David for an update on securing updating meeting locations. Yeah, hi, uh, David Yang with the Air District. So I just want to give a couple of updates on ethical meetings. Um, the next month's meeting, we're trying to reserve the Woodbine Elementary School. Uh, we're still waiting. We have put in a request, still waiting for them to get back to us. Um, the March meeting will be here at the Bathroom Center. Um, so next slide. Uh, so just kind of want to update the so you know pre-COVID when we're being in person, we wanted to move from location to location, so we get you know be in different areas to uh, provide access. Um, we are now moving to a hybrid meeting system. Uh, so with that said, there are some challenges in reserving uh, different meeting areas. Like for example, the La Familia Center is a you know pretty easy reservation. Uh, other places like Resources uh, Center or, or the Sacramento Data American. Health center is not available for this time kind slot. Of um, the, um, the school district and the penal center, there, there's a, a lot more logistical challenges. Um, you know, through their online system, making reservation, providing insurance, um, other permits as needed. Uh, so so there's, there's a challenge. So there are some challenges in, in trying to reserve new upcoming future meeting locations. So our one thought that we had was you know try to help with this process. Is, if we could um, stick it uh, or uh, uh, um, reserve a, a main location for the next few meetings, like the next couple of meetings, so that we will give us some time to uh, reserve um, other location as needed. Mm -hmm. So that's at, one thought. At one location. At one location. At one location. So, right. so 
that means so maybe we for the next couple of videos at least whatever wherever is going to be uh, available but then also i also see southgate uh, recreation and i don't know that um, so we said work with our members and so i, I think that's one of the other things uh, that was going to be an ask of southgate um to see if there was any facilities that would be available to host meetings for us on monday night so have we got anything back or or are we still, or are we just throwing it on them right now? <laughs> that's that's so right here. I got a question. I'm sorry. I got a question. This is Jesus. Jesus, miss you. Did you did you consider the uh, macro community center? The macro community center. Um, yeah. One that was they, have, they have a very nice uh, community group. Yes. So. <laughs> That's the Center Parkway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's on Center Parkway, and they have a very nice community room, so maybe that can be used as well. We will contact Bill. All right, we'll contact Bill. We'll All good. right, thank you. So, but now, now, we're back, now we're working back on the table. Yeah, so I haven't, this is Ward Winchell with Southgate Parks. I haven't heard of a request coming into our office yet. Okay. So would it always be Monday nights or would it Monday? Then this, um, the, the subcommittees, uh, do they go at different facilities or? We can well, come online with our subcommittees. We have yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we go to different neighborhood associations about like 814. Yes. 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 Got it. Can we make it just how long are we going to go on so we can know when? Some people have places to go and things right. to do. And so What's how long are we extending to? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so we've already confirmed some agenda items uh, for the next meeting. Um, the colleagues have already done that. Are there any other agenda topics members would like to add to what has already been confirmed by Stephanie and Vincent? Okay, not at this time. All right, we can move ahead into public comment. I would like to note that we have, uh, before we move into Barry, I would just like to note that we have been hearing public comments all throughout the presentation. Um, so with that being said, uh, I can pass to Barry first, who I saw had a raised hand. Thank you. Um, just a quick follow-up in, in addition to the Mac Road uh, Community Center, um, the Mac Road Partnership also has a meeting facility there in their actual office, just an FYI, uh, that you guys could ask Bill about. Um, I had some other things, but I'll, I'll hold back on uh, comments at this time. Okay. Thank you very much, Barry. Are there any um, comments in the room? Yes. I got one. Um, Adrian Ren with Valley Vision. Uh, appreciate you guys staying late. Um, just, you know, I think I indicated at our, the last of these meetings that uh, we received a community air grant to continue our work in uh, North Sacramento Park and Newly Meadowview. Um, so we are going to be uh, funded to do some clean air projects in the Meadowview area that you guys are considering uh, expanding your boundaries to, and maybe even the South Oak Park area if you're looking at like, far north. But um, yeah, seems like a good partnership opportunity. And then we're also in the next couple of months going to be um, finalizing a participatory budgeting white paper because um, we did PV as part of our grant and so we just kind of are writing like a four page thing about what worked and what didn't that we'll provide you guys in case you're curious. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank you. Okay, any final call for public comments, whether in person or online? Feel free to raise your hand if you're online or in person. All right, uh, seeing none and there are none in the chat, uh, we can go ahead and move to the next slide and vote to adjourn. Um, I just want to thank everyone for your patience as I've been facilitating. Um, as you're all aware, this is my first time doing this. Um, you guys have been doing this for a long time with a lot of history that I'm learning. And so thank you for your grace and acceptance as I've been doing this. Um, thank you for staying late. That was my fault. My apologies on that. I appreciate everyone here and everyone online. Um, and I want to remind everyone online and in person to submit any remaining votes if you haven't already done so. You know, <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. We started the Brenda. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, we started it. Hold to adjourn.
I move that we adjourn. Second. All right, please adjourn. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop the meeting recording. <laughs> we did start. Yes.